the last two years have been a great time for FNAF merch. Not only were new companies such as U2s and Hex popping up to capitalize on FNAF's history of perfectly marketable characters, but Funko and Sanchi were also getting back into the swing of things. Sure, Funko was still pumping out low quality recolors, but they also started their best wave of products since Pizzeria Simulator, Illumix's official recolors. And revealed on August 15th, 2022, Funko's brand new snap figures and playsets looked underwhelming. I mean, another set of weird looking figures whose gimmick was mixing and matching parts? Not exactly unique, Funko. I had hope for this series, but I wasn't exactly very interested. But when I actually started to receive these items, I realized how strangely high quality they were. And with three more waves being released after this, it seems Funko may have a new FNAF cash cow to milk. And hopefully they wait at least three sets before repackaging old figures as new ones. Hello and welcome to Prize Corner, the show where I review old and new FNAF merch and rank them with my own buy methods. And today, I'm obviously looking at Funko's very underrated Snap line of products. Today, I'll just be covering Wave 1, but in the future, I'll be talking about the others as well. At first, these were released in three different methods. Single characters, two packs, and play sets featuring a model of the FNAF location along with an animatronic that may or may not have anything to do with said location. But I'll cover the two single packs first. Since I started with him in the first video, I might as well do it again. Bonnie the Bunny. As the description states, Bonnie has six parts that you can use to mix and match with the other animatronics. Which, like I said, isn't a super unique gimmick. But in my opinion, it works way better than the action figures because those are highly detailed and very fragile. If you actually play with those figures for more than even a second, the joints will become loose and you can't even display them anymore. Funtime Freddy being the biggest example since his hand is already so heavy. But here, all the characters are short, fat, and chunky in their own unique style so you won't have to worry about the problems those figures have. As for the actual connections, if you've ever tried to play with those action figures, you know how easily they fall apart. You breathe, talk, cough on them wrong, and their arms will come off immediately. But the connections on the snap figures are great. Unless you put pressure on them or like, I, I don't know, drop them in the toilet, they will not come apart. But of course, they aren't hard to take apart either. It's simple and satisfying. With only four real parts to customize, you aren't really going to be making anything too crazy. But if you've ever wanted to see what Freddy and Fox's kids would look like, uh, maybe just commission an artist. Each figure comes with an extra face and a prop as well. And this is really nice. It's fun to see what they give characters who don't really have a prop in their games. But for Bonnie here, it's easy. His guitar pizza banjo, his pizza banjo. Ah yes, the iconic pizza banjo. I know Bonnie for carrying around. This is pretty dumb, but the model is cute, so I don't mind too much. What I do mind is that Funko can never get the figures to hold these things, can they? The neck is too skinny to fit in Bonnie's hand, and gripping the base makes it so you really have to squeeze it in there. It feels like it's gonna break. And even then, this isn't how you hold a banjo, Funko. If you're gonna keep giving them string instruments, you need to make a consistent and easy way for them to hold them. Like put a peg in it and attach it to the chest like McFarlane does. Under the figure itself, yeah, this is just not it. I mean, Bonnie isn't the worst snap figure, but I mean it's definitely one of the worst. His face is chunky and weird, his ears are just two boxes stacked up on each other, and honestly he looks like a Roblox character, which yes I know isn't exclusive to him since this is just the style of wave one, but for Bonnie it just looks way worse than the others in my opinion. He has these little red slivers on his mouth, which is supposed to be the red that's on his bottom jaw, which is nice, but it's kind of weird looking here. It looks like he just has a gum disease. If you take off the mask, you can see he actually has his endo from the games, which is so cool, but spoilers, all the FNAF 1 characters have that, so I won't be mentioning it as a pro until we get to the characters with a different endo. I don't really know why, but I like how the eyes are just cylinders that protrude out of the face. It just kind of looks funny. And for something actually about Bonnie, the eye color is a little dark, but pretty spot on. It at least looks a little bit more magenta than what U2's did. Putting on his second face, we see... Maybe it's the eyebrows that make him look worse than the others. That is a lot of forehead. Overall, this isn't the worst piece of merch I've ever seen, but as a start to this brand new line, it's really bad. Anyway, I'd give Snaps Bonnie a 2 out of 10. Inaccuracies, bad sculpts, and just not very appealing looking figures is not how you sell a whole new thing. I really hope they improve from here. My merits as a critic depend on it. What's that? I lost all credibility when I said I didn't like Foxy? Well, crap. Next up is Foxy the Pirate Fox, the other single pack. I mean, you could have put it in a more expensive set. People would pay anything for this mediocre fox. Why not give him a Pirate's Cove play set? Talk about a missed opportunity. Hello, this is uh, editing, Ouija. Um, I was looking at the boxes for the figures. I, I, I didn't really mention them because the packaging is just so 
uninteresting and boring that I just I didn't even really feel like bringing it up especially since it's the kind of packaging that you kind of have to completely destroy to get the figure out so I don't have any on hand but while I was looking at the foxy box art I noticed that they used a picture of withered foxy uh, instead of foxy which is weird but I mean not unheard of for Funko I just thought it was worth pointing out. I've never been one to hide the fact that I'm not a huge Foxy fan, but I will say that his snaps figures, oh, wait, oh, sorry, one second. Okay, that's better. Pretty good. He's pretty chunky, but they all are, so that's no problem. I love the fur in the middle of his head and sticking out of his ears. It makes it look so much more interesting. The chest and specifically the arms look spot on. It's always nice to see the endo in Foxy's chest. I don't really like how round the front of his pants look, but the mold for his legs look great. Even if they did the light gray plastic that you 2s did for the endo parts. I'm sorry, but I'll never see this as good. I mean, look at the early Funko Foxies. They all have this nice shiny silver paint. It looks great. And here it's just... Ugh. One weird thing about his sculpt is that his eye patch string just isn't painted. So it looks like he was just shaved in the side of his head. The prop is the Pirate's Cove sign with the It's Me message on it. I would have loved for it to be reversible with the regular out of order message on the back, but that's not that big of a deal. Although I will say that fitting it into his hand feels a little tight, just like with Bonnie's banjo. The neck of the sign even has some damage now. Strange. And that was Foxy! Pretty great for a Foxy, all things considered. <sighs> okay, fine. Foxy's face has ruined this figure. I'll be fair, the second one isn't that bad. Good, even. But wow, that neutral face is so ugly. Like, obviously they couldn't give him the snout, but... Wait, why couldn't they have? They would have made him stand out so much! He just looks like he was shoved into a hydraulic press. Just so out of it. Poor guy. Foxy's the first character to have a unique mold for his second face. His angry expression puts his eye patch up. Yeah, that is clever. As much as I don't like that face, I'll say yeah, this one isn't all that bad. Maybe if I liked Foxy more, I'd put my score way higher. But as of now, Snaps Foxy is a solid 6 out of 10. But hey, at least now you could roleplay Ultimate Custom Night without ruining your figure. Moving right along to the first of the two packs from this wave is Freddy and Springtrap. Strange combination of characters, but hey, you get stranger. I'm here for the weird shipping. Go crazy. Go stupid. First up, we'll look at Freddy Fazbear. Fredward is pretty solid all around. His prop is his mic, obviously, and his little hat is tilted slightly, and it's honestly really cute. The blue eyes really pop, and I think that the sunken in sockets work way better here than on Bonnie. I didn't mention it with Bonnie, but Funko actually remembered not to give the classics top teeth. It's insane that they finally caught up with the rest of us. Remember when we all thought that they changed the Freddy figure model that it was just for Frostbear? Good times. Wait, no, those times were awful. Okay, so here's the thing. That's kind of all the good I have to say about him. No matter how good your classic Freddy merch is, at the end of the day, it's still classic Freddy merch. This is a very good figure and like, I'm not gonna sit here and rant and rave about it. It's just good. One problem I do have is the weird harsh raised cheeks. It looks like something you'd see on a foxy. Okay, and his old face fucking blows, but what else is new? 7 out of 10. Freddy, you are boring as hell, but at least you didn't look like Springtrap. Speaking of Springtrap, this thing isn't horrible? Okay, it is, but I actually have things I like about it unlike Bonnie, so let me just justify myself for a second. I'll start with what I hate this time around. The body, mainly. This isn't the most accurate figure around. It seems that they were scared to do a lot of gore, but some is still present, making it all just seem very confusing. Like he gets one spot on his chest and everything else here is either white, black, or green. The same color as the rest of him. I still can't tell if the white stuff all over him is bone or his endo, as they are the same color. You may have seen these wires and assumed that they were more of Afton, but no, these are just wires which he does have. Which makes it even more confusing since the gore on his model looks very similar. What's extra confusing is that they only put these wires on his ankles and not a little further down on his little endo ridge toes. Strange, I guess I'm glad they didn't since no one can make that look good. But his feet just look so bare. His hands are probably the worst part about him. The tips of his fingers are all topped with these gray dots for some reason, and he also only has four fingers. 
why were you too lazy to just add a finger i only noticed this because i was going back to see if they included his missing fingertips they didn't only to realize that they forgot more than just the tip maybe this seems like a dumb complaint but springtrap having five fingers is kind of important to his design since he is a suit that is supposed to be worn by a human being in general this body just doesn't look like the game like this withering position is all wrong and they forgot his one button but i guess everyone forgets that let's move on from his body and talk about the head which is much better sure the eyes are in silver which is somehow still something funko forgets the fix but i think his head is very accurate like maybe i'm going crazy but it kind of looks like him i still hate the weird white parts under his suit just make it black guys and yes his eyes being wide open is out of character but everything else here kind of works the mouth going all the way around the head is big blocky gross teeth the metal rings around his eyes his weird but cool eye scar and for some reason even his ears work for me don't ask me why they don't on bonnie would do for springtrap i genuinely don't know maybe the blocky look just fits him more the second face even grew on me it's another random angry face but they actually lowered his eyelids instead of just morphing his face and the open mouth expression is super cool because it actually allows you to see afton's face inside the suit no merch ever does that not even you twos speaking of his face that's right instead of an endo underneath the mask we see afton's bloody face and wow this is so smart it looks a little goofy but if it didn't they might have needed to raise the age rating his face looks just like the one actually under his mask just with a goofy smile which is the only part i'm not a huge fan of but overall this is such a great detail and just for it i'm glad they included him you might have noticed that there is one detail i overlooked with this figure and that's his prop well the reason i skipped over it is because i don't really know know exactly how I feel about it. So what is it? A knife? A pizza cutter? Maybe even a dead child? It's a spring trap hand puppet. Oh. Oh, this is weird. I don't know how to feel about this. On one hand, it's really cute and I love it. But on the other hand, what the fuck is this? Is it plus trap? Adventure spring trap? No, neither of them have a bow tie and neither does spring trap actually. This little hand puppet seems to actually be a reskin of Bon Bon but made to look like spring trap. Which is weird because there's no snaps Bon Bon yet. So what gives? Whatever, I'm not gonna think about it too hard. I don't want to get a headache. It does seem like a wasted opportunity to me. Like, why isn't this plush trap? I don't know. This thing is so weird, and maybe I should dock the figure points for it, but honestly, I have no opinion either way. When Snaps first released, I fucking hated this thing. And to a point, I still do. It's inaccurate and weird and just doesn't really look great. But I really do think they knocked it out of the park with that head. And it has really grown on me as I see what they were trying to do. I appreciate it. Clearly being an inspiration to make this series in the first place, I'm gonna give Snap Springtrap a solid 4 out of 10. But believe me, if that body wasn't so abysmal, it would be a lot higher. So adding up the two figures, the Freddy and Springtrap 2-pack gets a 5.5 out of 10. Not bad, but with one figure being kinda boring and the other other being horribly inaccurate you could do a lot better but to be fair you could do a lot worse too next up is the second and last two pack of the wave that being toy bonnie and circus baby okay wow that is a very random combination but hey those are two of my favorite characters in all of fnaf so i have high hopes for this one starting with toy bonnie oops <laughs> looks like i misplaced his face huh Eh, whatever. Toy Bunny never gets merch. And even when he does, it's never good. To prove my point, the best merch of Toy Bonnie Funko has ever made isn't even technically him. So how does the Snaps figure fare? Well, right off the bat, it's amazing. I mean, wow, that color is vibrant. His tummy is an egg shape, but they squeezed it in there so it wasn't cut off like the others. The texture is great, completely smooth. And while I do like the textures that the other have, I don't know, this perfect and smooth feeling is so much better than that rough played with fur. His arms are made up of three balls and I can't explain it but that is so fitting of the toys and it follows to the hands these look just like the game just a lot smaller of course same with the feet I know those blocky toes anywhere moving up to the head he has the classic green eyes and of course his endo being endo 2 which I'm so glad that they took the time to change that mold. McFarlane did a similar thing with their figures, and it was cool, but when all of the Endos just looked like a version of Endo 01 not even from the game, it loses a lot of its charm. But here, all of the Endos are changed to be exactly what they should, and it's so cool. It feels like Funko actually cares about the details for once. And look, Toyvani even has eyelashes attached to his Endo, that's so cute. I mean, they even fixed the ears! They are rounded, and one is even posed in a unique way, are we sure? 
Toy Bonnie was part of Wave 1. No tail, but that isn't a huge deal. Well, I think it's fair to say this figure is amazing and definitely deserves a- Oh! <laughs> Wait, sorry, I found the faces. Um, I must have dropped it. Silly me. Let's just put this back on and... Oh. Oh. I don't know what to say. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but this face is so ugly and ruins the figure for me. Yes, the rest of him is fantastic. But when the face is this huge and it's all I'm seeing when I look at it on my shelf, gosh, it's just so bad. Like every time I feel like I'm being too harsh, I pull up an image of Toy Bonnie and place it next to this figure. No, no, I'm not overreacting. The second face isn't much better as it's the exact same with just the mouth being slightly hollowed and the brows being slightly lowered. Oh, okay. His face isn't the only thing wrong with him. He was also given Wait, that's Bonnie's guitar. Why did they give Toy Bonnie Bonnie's guitar? That is so confusing. I mean, if you switch these, it would make both figures a lot better. I wouldn't mind the pizza banjo being Toy Bonnie's permanent instrument. It fits him well. But no, this was clearly an accident, right? Like this had to have been a mistake. Look, I don't want to say this because the rest of them is so good, but I won't lie. This is my least favorite figure of wave one. I feel so bad saying that, but this thing looks awful, especially when putting them next to the other toys in wave two. It just doesn't work. What is up with Funko not being able to get Toy Bonnie's face right? I'm sorry, but Toy Bonnie is a three out of 10. With a better face, he could have easily been a nine or even a 10, but I feel awful because without the face, this is actually amazing. But as soon as we put that mask on, he is just so ugly and I can't get past it. So many bad figures, please, I need Circus Baby to be good! Oh, huh. Well, yeah, this one is a huge improvement. Circus Baby is one of my favorite FNAF characters, but unfortunately most of her merch just misses that mark for me. It isn't all bad, just... Well, they tried. And I think, to a degree, the same applies here. I mean, it isn't perfect, but I actually really love this attempt at Circus Baby. All her details look great, if not a little compressed. I mean, look at those flat ass shoes. But I mean, look at her chest. The fan looks great, and the skirt and the top are this really pleasing shade of dark red I actually really enjoy the look of. In general, I think the colors are spot on here. Especially with the eyes, the dark green is so pretty. Merch always has problems with the hair. Usually making it seem like she has a receding hairline her face is complicated with a lot of important details to fit in. And this is no different, but at the same time, with the removable face, it actually makes a lot of sense why this decision was made. So I don't really mind it at all. Speaking of the hair, Circus Baby's pigtails look incredible. I love how they made them into this angular design to fit the style, and wow, it's really impressive. It's easily my favorite detail included here. The faceplates look good. I wish they were outlined with black so they would stand out a little more, but I get how easy it would be for those small black lines to smudge. So I understand why they didn't do that, but it's really hard to make some of these out especially on her legs But hey at least the plates aren't all white as they remember to include the gray panels They even put the gray on her fingertips to represent the helium dispensers for inflating balloons The attention to detail is amazing. How is this released alongside spring trap? Her default face is a little goofy But overall like circus baby and her alternate face features her mouth face plates open with an angry expression that lowers the eyelids like spring trap did Oh my god, this is so cool. It works surprisingly well and was a creative workaround for her always smiling. I'm impressed. And on this face we even see a glimpse of her endo which is obviously under that face. It's the tubular funtime endo. This looks good of course but I'll be honest the funtime endo is not one of my favorites. And Circus Baby's smile is kind of creepy. Okay, it isn't all sunshine and ice cream. I do have a few problems here. One is her microphone, which is clearly just Freddy's repainted. I mean, sure, that works, but it just looks kind of weird. And mine wasn't even painted well, so that's great. And the other thing is, well, if you want to make her sing into the microphone, you can't. Her shoulder things are too fat and make it impossible to put her arms up without that happening. This isn't a huge deal for me as I usually just display these, but if you actually wanted to play with her, this will make it a tad annoying. That being said, this is an incredible figure. All of her parts are just slightly less than perfect, and it's a complete package. This rocks! Which I believe is almost my exact description for 9 out of 10, but unfortunately I do think I'm gonna give her an 8 out of 10. I love this figure and all, but with a figure so small and a design so complicated in a style so weird, I can't help but look at her and think, 
Yeah, this shit looks a little funky. But hey, a little funk never hurt anybody. And even without a perfect score, she is still one of my favorites in the wave. If only they would have refined her details a little bit more. Oh well. The Tori Bonnie and Circus Baby 2 pack obviously gets a combined 5 out of 10. This is the textbook definition of a mixed bag, with one half sucking shit through a straw and the other gracefully discarding of it. Not exactly a great package, but hey, they could have both sucked. And finally, for the last release style, the playsets. Starting with Golden Freddy with Stage. Luckily for us, this box didn't require us to literally destroy it to get to the package inside, so let's have a look. The back just has logos and some simple instructions on what you can do with it, and oh, uh, hi Mangle. But the side here shows, um, Withered Golden Freddy. Well, I guess it's not that weird. I mean, they did the same with Foxy earlier, and with Golden Freddy, it's hard to really find a good render of him. It's still weird, but it's really not that big of a deal. Let's just open this package. Maybe that's why all the boxes are themed around FNAF 2 for some reason. Let's start with the playset, but that doesn't mean it isn't amazing. It is, in fact, one of the best pieces of merch I've ever seen. I mean, this is incredibly accurate with the Bonnie-themed red and purple checkered floors, the classic FNAF wall pattern, the brick wall holding the clouds and the sun behind the red curtain, curtains. There's even a security camera. The stage and speakers aren't exact, but it's close enough. Against the walls are giant open doors the animatronics can fit through, which obviously isn't in the game, but it's part of this series gimmick. So I'll come back to that later. The stage is shoved all the way against the wall, leaving plenty of floor space for tables and chairs, which also come with the set. The tables look okay, but are probably the weakest part here, as the sides don't have the confetti pattern and the party hats aren't even striped like in the games. Although I do like that one of them is tipped over. It's a fun detail. But the chairs are literally exactly the same, only missing the star in the backs of them, which I assume is a cushion, but to be honest, I've never really thought about it. Anyway, the chairs look a little plain without them, but it's not too bad. You also only get three chairs which just can't look good in a setup because no matter what, one table is missing a chair, but once again, this just doesn't really matter all that much. This thing went far above and beyond what it needed to be, a background for Golden Freddy, and instead it decided to be a beautifully accurate recreation of a location from FNAF 1, and that is awesome. Wait. Oh yeah, this sucks as a background for Golden Freddy. I mean, it isn't horrible as he has appeared here at least once in FNAF 2, but other than that, he only ever shows up in the office, so just make the office and put him in that? Oh. Oh, oh you gave the FNAF 1 office to Toy Freddy. Makes sense. Like I said, he has shown up here before, so it isn't that big of a deal, especially with how incredible this set is. Even with its problems, I'm giving the stage a 9 out of 10. The show stage was a perfect choice for this, as you could put all of the classics on it once you've collected them all. And the floor space means you have somewhere to put all the leftovers. Look, they're watching the show. Let's hope that Golden Freddy can keep up this winning streak. Golden Freddy himself is obviously just Freddy, but painted yellow. I'm gonna be honest, and maybe this is my bias showing, but this is way better than Freddy. I can't fully explain it, but this just works so much better for him. But I'll start with some obvious downsides. He is standing. Now for the figure, I can excuse it as the gimmick makes it impossible to give them set poses. And here is similar. But at the same time... I mean, why couldn't you make the leg piece have a different mold? I mean, the staff bot was allowed that, why not Golden Freddy? I'll tell you. Laziness. This is a recolor first and Golden Freddy second, unfortunately. That isn't the only problem, of course. As he is still Freddy, a lot of those problems carry over here, such as his stomach cutting off and his weird curved cheeks. But with that said, I actually love what this figure does for Golden Freddy. First off, his hat is tilted, which obviously Freddy had, but it fits Golden Freddy so much more as he's constantly slumped over, and it really adds to the figure for me. It's one of my favorite details in this set, even if it isn't exclusive to him. Well, it still looks a little weird. The angry face fits Golden Freddy way more since when I think of Golden Freddy, I think pissed the fuck off. Sort of. What I'm saying is that this is still silly, but I kinda like it. I actually wish his face was more neutral instead of Freddy's, I don't know, half paying attention face. Like the eyebrows being lowered would look really nice on him, but recolor first and all that. One thing I could see people not liking are his pitch white eyes, and yes, I do wish they just gave him either fully black eyes or at least a white dot like the toys. This doesn't look that bad. Actually, I kind of like it. It's like a more chibi-fied Golden Freddy. It makes him look like a big puppy dog, and with the black pits around his eyes, it still feels like him. Just. I don't know, with his pupils dilated, I guess. This figure isn't perfect by any means, but. I really love it, and I think it's a step above Freddy, meaning that Snap's Golden Freddy gets an 8 out of 10. 
Man, I throw these out like candy, huh? I guess it's just the easiest rating to give something I like. The package altogether is great. Well, if, if you ignore the character choice. And it gets an 8.5 out of 10. Clearly the best score so far. It just shows how amazing these playsets are gonna be. The next playset is everyone's favorite chicken and cupcake combo, Chica and the Storage Room. Well, they messed up Classic Golden Freddy. I can't see much of a way that they can mess up Chica. I mean, she has a billion renders and, you know, they get it right on every other kind of merch. So let's see what they... They use Toy Chica. How the hell does a mistake like that even happen? I mean, it's really weird since in Wave 2 we actually got a Toy Chica, but nope, this is not her box. This is Classic Chica's box. Cool. Man, these boxes are weird. Good thing Wave 2 kind of just stopped putting characters on the packaging and then brought it back for Wave 3 and immediately used stolen fan art. Come on, Funko, I'm really trying to root for you here, but then you make it so hard. So the room that came in this package is not from any FNAF game. It is definitely based on the backstage from FNAF 1, but this is very clearly a different thing. This being original is not a bad thing. I mean, yes, it is weird that they chose this over Pirate's Cove or The Office on the surface. If you know about this playset's gimmick, it honestly makes perfect sense. But back to that in a second. The only thing this set being original means is that it's impossible for me to dock points for inaccuracies. Smart thinking, Funko. Okay, so this storage room is honestly themed and decorated sublimely. It comes with these chunky tables and an endoskeleton head, which is surprisingly well made. It looks like one of the snap figures, seemingly Freddy, got their endo scooped out. So cool. And lastly, a box of random wires and Freddy's hat. This is great set dressing, and I'm seriously in love with these cute little props. But that isn't even the coolest part of this set. That would go to this back wall. Everything here is so well made. It would have been so easy for them to make a boring flat shelf with nothing going on, but instead this whole area feels so used and lived in. Like one of the cabinets is broken, looking like it was ripped open, and the other is taped off and dented to shit, like an animatronic was trying to get into it. The middle shelf having boxes of overflowing animatronic parts like a mic, tons of Freddy eyes, and even a black hand. Lefty, is that you? I love that one of the boxes was put on the top shelf because no room was left. I love how unorganized this all is. It feels like a shitty restaurant around storage room that isn't taken care of. The top shelf has eight endo heads on the walls, some with their eyes and some without. These endos all have connections on them, meaning that you could fit your spare faces onto them for storage. That is genuinely genius. This isn't even the only connection here. The tables have a spot for heads to be placed so you can pretend to do work on them. And the spare endo head has the same face connections too. I wish I had this when I was younger because it seems so fun to play with. They expertly crafted this playset and I just love it so much. I love how even with the play feature covering just about everything, they still put some differences to the head like a broken jaw and the eyes and made the top shelf seem dirty and untouched with cobwebs covering them. It is so impressive for Funko. I gave my reasons to why I love this thing, but I know that you are probably still thinking, well, it's still a weird choice. These characters don't fit in these playsets, so it's dumb. But I disagree. So here is why I believe that the storage room is the best choice that they possibly could have made for a playset in this series. Ignoring the obvious that it is genuinely useful in a literal storage room, it's a storage room, meaning that Fazbear Entertainment might want to use it to store animatronics that wouldn't fit in the FNAF 1 location. Do you get it yet? Springtrap and Baby may not fit in this setting, but they fit perfectly in this one. No matter what, you could just say they are being used for parts. Which brings me to my one complaint. Just call it parts and service. As for fitting the character it comes with, yeah, Chica is a weird one. But I don't really care that much since if you just do this, it fits perfectly. This playset is perfect. And while I had my doubts when it was revealed, it is clear to me that this is obviously a 10 out of 10. Multiple uses past what it was made for? Check. Looks amazing? Check. Fits with pretty much any theme and character? Check! Yes, I do agree that our first 10 out of 10 going to a room that isn't even in a FNAF game is very stupid. I can't help it! This genuinely earns that! No joke, I've been considering buying two of these just so I can hold more faces. That's how good it is! I've never had a piece of FNAF merch that was so good I wanted to buy it more than once. Now while the review is over, there is another feature for these playsets that I need to go over. If you get both or more of these rooms, you can simply snap them together. Meaning you can make your own pizzeria designs and customize to your heart's content. 
Okay, full disclosure, with wave one, you can make two combinations. But this was clearly meant to be expanded upon when more waves got produced. But on the surface level, this is a good idea. I do have my problems with it, but they don't really apply to wave one, so I'll save those for another time. Just know that while this was a great idea, it just doesn't feel fully realized, and it's more just a slightly convenient way to display the playset so they don't get unaligned or slide around, but the connections suck and don't even snap together, so the name is kind of a lie. Yeah, not very exciting. Anyway, wow, that is going to be a tough act to follow, especially with the figure being Chica, but maybe she'll surprise us. Being a chica, her mold is very unique compared to the other mostly rabbit and bear offerings, and that definitely helps to stand out. Her face is extremely cute, and while she is missing the slight patheticness that she usually has, I really like what they did here. The stylized beak is wonderful. I know it's a stupid thing to praise, but I like when merch gives the female characters special eyes. Like I know it's stupid since not all women in real life had pointed eyes and two long eyelashes, but I think it just helps her stand out and makes her even more adorable. I just wish they let Toy Bonnie go full trans mode and gave them to him too. He would have looked so much better. Chica here doesn't have the eyelashes on the endo, making this even more confusing. Her bib looks a little short, but there's not much they could have done there without it being cut off, so I much prefer how this works. And her toes are a light gray. Huh. Better than usual. I like how not uniform her feathers are. They look great with that texture. Her second face is obviously her, but angry, but it actually kind of works here. The weird squashed face looks a lot better with her beak, I guess. I can't explain it, but I like this. Not enough to use it, but wow, yeah. Her prop is a brand new Mr. Cupcake in the snap style, and honestly, I really like it. It isn't perfect, but I mean, it looks just like him, and he is pissed. And after seeing the FNAF movie, well, let's just say it's fitting. For such a small scale, they did great. A small detail about this guy I just adore is that this peg that Chica holds is yellow, so it blends in with their hand, so it looks more like she's just holding the plate. What a great touch I'm surprised they came up with. Oh uh, wow, I really didn't expect to have almost no issues with this thing. I mean, going in I already knew it was my favorite, but I didn't know I liked it this much. I think I've definitely justified why Chica is getting a 9 out of 10. Wow, Chica is on a roll with these 9s if you ignore the pop video. But she really has come into her own with the more recent merch. It's almost like making fully unique models instead of just working off Freddy makes them way better! Who knew? And with that, I can confidently say that the Chica with Storage Room playset is a 9.5 out of 10. Almost perfect. Man, Chica really knows how to end these reviews on a high note. What is this, the third time? And that was the entire first wave of Funko Snaps. Sure, it started pretty rough, but ignoring Toy Bonnie, we went nowhere but up the entire time. And with how phenomenal those last two playsets were, I am so excited to see where this series goes from here, and even more excited to talk about them on the show. But a little warning, that might be a while. I have some specific plans for the future. Anyway. Here's the ever-growing tier list so you can see how these snapped figures stack up against the last three waves we've looked at so far. And if you want to participate, the tier maker will be in the description as always. I'd love to see how your opinions differ from mine, as I'm not really sure of the common consensus with these figures. So fill it out and send me your list in my Discord. And hey, are you still not convinced that the storage room was a good addition? Or do you simply agree that Chica is always the best in these newer merch waves? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you all next time where I look at a video game packaging and the random junk it comes with. See you on the flip side here I'll, this is what i'm reviewing today i'm reviewing better the kitty all right here's the 360 shot of her do you like it oh she likes it okay <laughs> she likes that too much <laughs> <laughs> that <worked> so well <laughs> please do not flush